clotted cream. It's not something that you normally associate outside of England. It comes from Devon or Cornwall. There's a whole thing about which one got it first and which cream tea is right. I spent many years living in Devon, so I prefer, or I like to believe it came from Devon. What is clotted cream? It's a milk product. So during the process or manufacture of milk and cream, they would take or extract the cream from the dairy, add some of it back into the milk and then start processing. It's then heated up to 75 to 80 degrees C, left at that temperature for a set period of time, and then allowed to dry out really slowly until you get a crust. Now, I'll just close it in there. This crust is really important, and you just can't get that when you make it at home. And you see loads of recipes online for you know, other parts of the world that say you can make this. You absolutely can't make this like we buy in the shops over here at home. You just can't make it the same way. It doesn't turn out the same. It's very thick. It's extremely high fat. So this tub here is 67% fat. Butter fat is off the chart. And what's the difference between Devon cream tea and Cornish cream tea? I'll just leave that there. It's what goes first, cream or jam. That's it. I like to put the cream on first and then put the jam on the top. And there we go. And this got me thinking, I wonder if you could make this into an ice cream. Scones. They're also a different thing. Some people think that North American biscuits are the same as scones. They're not. They're not at all. They might look the same, but they're very, very different in texture, taste, uh, even how they're made. They're, they're a very different thing. And when I was over in America last, I tried the biscuits, uh, you know, from a few different places, and they're just not even in the same ballpark. But I reckon I can make a clotted cream ice cream with jam and scone add-ins into it. So let's give that one a shot, shall we? If you're ready to make the fattiest ice cream you'll ever make, then here we go. Straight into your pan, add your milk, add your sugar and dextrose, and finally add your glucose syrup and then your milk powder. Make sure that's all really, really well combined because the next stage is adding your clotted cream. Now this is Rhoda's clotted cream, like I mentioned before, it's 67.5% fat. The butter fat is just off the chart, so you'll see that in a bit. Add in your clotted cream, make sure it's really well combined. Now, does it make that much of a difference? Yes, it does, because you don't want the lumps of this sitting in your base. Anyway, heat it up until all the cream is completely melted and, and, and homogenized in the base, and then add that into a container. And once that's chilled properly, the butter fat will all solidify on the top. So what you're gonna to need to do is put it in a blender and give it a good 10, 15 seconds worth of mixing. Re-emulsify that back, then add it to your ice cream machine and churn. This will solidify quite quickly. So don't walk off and expect it to take half an hour. At that stage, we're gonna start tubbing up. So we're gonna take some of our scones, Put some nice jam, I've used a nice raspberry jam on here, and then start loading up your tub. Do layers of ice cream, some of your little jam covered scone pieces, and add in some mixed jam as well, just for a nice swirl. Once that's completely done, put it in the freezer. Leave it in there for a good few hours. There we go, clotted cream ice cream made on the hob. If you can't buy clotted cream, you can have a go at making it. I've not tried any recipes because I can just buy it in stores, but 
I'll put a couple of recipes for clotted cream down below if you want to give it a shot. I can't guarantee it's going to be exactly the same as, as Rhoda's, the one that I've just used, but hey, it is what it is. Clotted cream has a very distinct taste. It has a very distinct texture. It really is quite unique. So let's get the ice cream out of the freezer and get some scooped up and see what we ended up with, shall we? I mean, texture-wise, that's that's really good. Really, I mean, it's it's fatty. Let me just. You've got lumps of the scone or scone, depending on which one you are. Scone or scone. That's the two different ways that people pronounce it over here. I'm a scone man, but my wife is a scone woman, so it doesn't really matter. Say it however you like. What we've got is. A really, really fatty, but incredibly tasty. It tastes just like clotted cream. I mean, it's, it's dense. It's a little chewy. It, like I said, this is, this is really fatty. This is probably the fattiest ice cream you'll ever make, but in hell is it good. Let's get some of that scone in and give you a better taste review, shall we? It's so close to being bad that it's good. The, the butter fat, the sheer amount of butter fat in this is just teetering on the edge of being gritty. But instead it just goes in your mouth and explodes with clotted cream flavor. Remember, there's no, there's no flavoring in this ice cream. This is just taking on that clotted cream flavor itself. So if, if you make it home, I don't know what you're gonna get. I don't know what it's gonna taste like, but give it a bash. If you wanna flavor it with something, maybe just start with just a little touch of vanilla. It, it doesn't really have a vanilla taste, but it has a smooth taste. And vanilla might help just bring the flavor of your homemade clotted cream out a little bit. The jam works really well. The scones do go quite hard. Now that surprised me a little bit actually. I didn't think they'd go quite as hard as they did, but sat out here probably just a couple of minutes while we film this and try this. They're back to normal, you know, so it all works really well. I think breaks down in the mouth really nicely. You do get, you know that it's high fat because you get that drag on the spoon. You get that slight lingering fattiness in your mouth. That's how you know this is really high fat, really high fat. Some people don't like that. And to be fair, I probably wouldn't make ice cream like this often because it is so high fat. But sometimes you just need to break the rules. So clotted cream ice cream, we might call this, I don't know, Devon cream tea ice cream, Cornish cream tea ice cream, something like that. I know I made a cocktail with these years ago and it, again, it worked out really well. I didn't use ice cream, of course, but this is a really nice, unusual one to make. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next week.